Hello, third graders at Lafayette. This is Miss Taylor. Our new science unit is all about the water cycle. Our big idea is water is essential for life on Earth. That means it is necessary for all living things. Plants need water. People need water. Animals need water. Where do we find water? Well, water is all around us. If we look at the earth, most water on earth is in the ocean, 97%. That's salt water. We can't drink salt water, but it is very important. Most fresh water, which is the water that humans and other most other animals can use, is frozen, and we can't use the frozen water. That's 77%. It's frozen at the North and South Poles, in icebergs, and in polar ice caps. So that leaves us with the rest of fresh water sources that we can use. Reservoirs are man-made lakes, rivers, wells, where we access underwater, or excuse me, underground water, lakes, ponds, and streams. Why do we need water? Well, for drinking, growing up plants that we eat for food, for habitat, transportation, getting from one place to another, bathing and cleaning ourselves and our homes, our clothes, recreation, that's when we play in the water, like at a swimming pool or at the beach or the lake. And as we go through our unit, we're going to think a lot more about what is the water cycle. A cycle is a series of events that happen over and over and not necessarily in the same order. I'm going to change that. Um, because the water cycle, it doesn't necessarily happen in the same order. But the event happened over and over. And something really amazing about the water cycle is it doesn't always go in the same order. So we'll be learning about that as well during this unit. The main focus is how the water cycle is the continuous movement of water on, you don't need to capitalize that, so I'm going to make it lowercase. The water cycle is the continuous movement of water on, in, and above Earth. It has no beginning or end point. And what's neat about the water cycle is the sun and the heating and cooling of water is what drives the water cycle. So we'll be learning all about that. And gravity, which is a force we've already learned about, it pulls down on water and it has an impact on the water cycle also. We'll be learning more about the three parts of the water cycle, evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. Evaporation is when the sun heats the water and it changes into gas or vapor, water vapor. The vapor rises into the air. Once it gets up there, it cools down. That's called condensation. As it rises higher, the vapor cools off and condenses back into liquid droplets or ice crystals and forms clouds. And then those clouds get pretty heavy and precipitation happens. When the water droplets or ice crystals get too heavy, they fall to the ground as a liquid like rain or a solid like snow or hail. And always please, please keep in mind how powerful the sun is. It all starts with the sun. It continues with the sun. The sun, the power of the sun, the heat from the sun, its energy, it heats that water. And as water gets heated or cools, it goes through that water cycle in different ways. 
So anyways, I hope you enjoy our unit about the water cycle. Bye, third graders.